10 from the 30-yard line. Attaway hands it off. Coleman down to the 22-yard line. Jason Webster makes the tackle. Well, the offensive line, they're doing a good job of pushing here. Watch the big offensive line. Move the defensive lineman, and then you got Tubby Coleman coming into your living room. He's going to move down the field. Runs through some tackles. Watch him move the legs here at the end of the run. That's what the quarterbacks, I mean, the coaches like to see on the film. Coleman, 16 carries, 53 yards for North Texas tonight. Three minutes remaining. Third down and one. And no way forward progress stopped. And again, Corey at this time, no flag. A little inside handoff there, and good surge that time by Texas A&M's defense. You know, whenever you stop anybody in their own backfield, that's a heck of a play. Watch it here. Got a little slip around by the nose guard, so it left uh, left an open gap there in the, in the, behind him. Coleman didn't have a chance to get started. And fourth down and four, loss of three on the play, sets it back to the 24-yard line. North Texas again taking up 401, way too much time, but they just like to get something on the board at this stage. Attaway. Incomplete McGrew and a flag thrown. Going to be against North Texas as Brooks was covering. They're going to call interference on Brooks, and McGrew reminds him just in case he didn't know. Well, Bill, that was a very well thrown ball that time by Attaway. He threw it outside. Good call. You know, get him out with one big receiver, throw it up high, and uh, would have been a completion if he hadn't. It's like a face guarding play pass here. I'm not sure it's interference or maybe just face guarding. See what we call on this. Nonetheless, it's going to be a first down for North Texas. Continue this drive. We're back to move the football now with 2.09 remaining in the ball game. Pass interference on the defense. It'll be a 15 yard penalty and an automatic first down. Two oh nine to go. They move it, and it's now a first and goal from the nine-yard line. So North Texas, a team that has only scored an average of eight points a game, just three tonight, trying to get a touch here. Holly in motion. Two tight ends. Attaway wide open. Did he step out of bounds? No. Touchdown. Touchdown. Allred, the score on a nine-yard pass from Attaway. You know, it's kind of a fitting play for Hunt Allred. He's a senior, the leader on that offense, and really uh, one of the guys that's really respected. He's been injured in his career, but, you know, at 204 pounds, he's kind of undersized for fullback. Watch him here to the left side. Just got to slip out, a little boot action. Good job. Nobody covers him. I guess it's a blown assignment by AM, but does a nice job of catching. He's actually the fastest guy on North Texas, and he's the fullback at 6'3, 204, and he can still move it pretty good. 28 to 9. They're going to go for two here. Young comes back toward the line in motion, just coming into a picture. They go right up the middle and get the two point conversion on the carry by Coleman. Flag again, though. Yeah, as the motion man came inside, the left was split in on the, on the top of the screen, was trying to get position, and that's what the penalty is. It's just a motion penalty on the offense. So that'll push it back if they're going to go for the two. Illegal shift on the offense. Be a five-yard penalty. Retry. Darrell Dickey getting a further explanation. Making the calls himself. I think he's encouraged on his on his performance by his team tonight. Sure. They come in here into a hostile environment. You know, they stayed with him pretty close. The big plays, as we talked about, you know, to Cole. Cole's had a spectacular night. You take those away, and I think, it, you know, it's, it's it's a lot closer ball game than what the scoreboard reads.
Two-point conversion attempt. Throwing, got a man in the end zone. Incomplete, nearly picked off regardless. Not complete, and making the grab, Jason Glenn was covering there, and the two-point conversion attempt is no good. And it makes it 28 to nine. Well, let's see what he's got in his bag of tricks here. Do we go for the onside kick, try to get back in this game a little bit more? You know, it's something you need to work on. You know, they may, it yeah. may not be something that they're going to win this game with, getting the football back, but it's something you need to work on. And, hey, this is a good foe to go against. Uh, I, I would expect him to go ahead and do that. Hut all red. Grin in his face after the nine-yard TD pass. Kept off an 85-yard drive that took 12 plays. Now they come over to visit with R.C. Slocum. You know, I asked uh, well, you mentioned Chris Cole and three touchdown receptions for Cole ties an AM single game record. Well, the first play of the ball game, we've talked about it and shown it. Chris Cole just runs away. And they run this same play for a touchdown again, as we may see here if we get that together. You know, whenever you get a, a cornerback out there by himself with no deep safety help, boy, it's a tough assignment. You got a big field out there. And, you know, Cole here, now you got McCown running the exact same play. And he does a nice job of stepping up, and Cole does a good job catching the ball in the end zone. What a night for the junior from Orange, Texas, out of West Orange Dark. One more. This is a spectacular play, Gary. Yeah, it is. It really is. You know, he's got concentration on the football and does a good job going up to receive the ball. Even though the defender interfered with him, he makes the catch. You know, it's been a while since a and has had a big, big play receiver, and I think Cole may be, be the answer to that. You know, obviously, teams who are going to watch this tape of this game are going to see that and say, hey, we have to contend with Texas a and Texas A&M passing game down the field. They've evidence they can do that, so now it's something teams are going to have to prepare for. Yeah, they got to go back a few years to Corey Pullock used to hook up with O'Connell, some of those folks. Cole, three touchdowns last year. <laughs> he gets three tonight. The onside kick, Texas A&M recovers it. And Cody was there. Having a good year for a and A couple interceptions in the La Tech game. Yeah, well, Daryl Dickey, I think he's really pleased with his team. And, you know, I asked him, I said, with the program that you have and you have the schedule that you have, you know, what are your concerns about that? And he says, well, the schedule is what it is. I didn't make it. I got it when I got here. But he says, you know, from this schedule, we're going to take the revenue, the revenue that they make off these ball games with the, the big 12 schools and put it into their program. They're going to step up their program. And I said, well, what is the draw for a recruit to come to North Texas? And, you know, Daryl told me, he says, you know, we run the eye. We like to run the ball. I think we can recruit a big-time tailback to come to this program. And that's what they're trying to do. They feel like they'll be able to get some good recruits in there because, hey, there's opportunity. Timeout is called, so McCown will have a chance to come over and visit. Trying to finish up a very nice performance for the junior out of Jacksonville. 10 of 12 for 163 yards tonight and two scores. And R.C. Slocum, all right, you got kind of a tough decision now. You go to Kansas for <laughs> Big 12 play. You go with Brandon Stewart, well, you go with Randy McCown. You know, one thing about a coach, you know, coaches always have to make decisions, and they're not afraid of it. R.C. Slug has been making them for a long time here at this university. You know, the quarterback decision, you know, I think that he's going to start Brandon Stewart again. There's probably not going to be able to question about that. He's their senior leader. He's got the job. It may not have been his night. Hey, if the guy's got a hot hand, go with him. Yeah, but R.C.'s got a good program here, and I think, you know, this is a, the, the game they wanted to, to tune up a little bit to move into the Big 12. But things have gone well for him here this evening. You know, he's had to deal with some, with some things kind of off the field this week, the Tiki Hardman situation and what's going to deal with that, the media scrutiny on that situation. Hey, it's something that was completely out of the football program's control, and, you know, they did uh, everything they could to make the, the situation right, and they found out about it early before the ball game last week in Southern Miss. And, uh, you know, R.C. has got a good good head on his shoulders, and, he, and he's taking this program, you know, he wants to take it to the next level, which is getting into the top ten, the top five. Well, they meet Kansas next week. The Jayhawks tonight win in four overtimes over Alabama-Birmingham, 39-37. That's amazing. Oh, man. So there'll be a little juice for the Aggies now. First and 10 from the 49. And McCown pitches at the last moment. Flag is thrown. And tumbling out of bounds. First carry for Burness Rhodes, a sophomore from Terrell, Texas. Moody made the tackle. Also, uh, Big 12. You heard the earlier scores, maybe uh, Tech, Texas Tech winning 31-24 of Iowa State. Kansas State 62, Northeast Louisiana 7. 
Nebraska pounding Washington 55 to 7. Texas tonight beats Rice 59 to 21. And Baylor Holy trails Lord. Colorado. Offense. It'll be a 10 yard penalty and remain first down. It's 5 0 Colorado. 10-39 remaining in the first half, I believe. Yeah, That's over Baylor. He looks like he's in control here. Hey, a little nifty run there. McCann, oop, pitch it out there. Good control. <laughs> Hasn't done much wrong tonight, has it, Bill? No. Boy, he's really done a nice job. Fired everybody up here right before the half when he led him to that touchdown. 152 to go here. And... On the penalty, first and Jillian, 22. Rogers makes the tackle this time on Rhodes. And the clock moving now. Well, I think it's been a battle in the trenches tonight. You've got a big offensive line from North Texas, and they went against a pretty good, pretty potent wrecking crew defense. And now this offensive line is playing pretty well, I think, in the second half for, for Texas A&M. They've moved the ball. And I think they've done a really good job of pass protection. I think the Aggies have put the ball in the air a lot more tonight than they have, you know, previous games. And you know, that's kind of what uh, R.C. and Steve Crackthorpe wanted to accomplish, move the ball down the field, expand their offense, and I think they've gotten gotten what they wanted out of this ball game. Second and 22 with the 39, and breaking it right up the middle. 11 yards, I believe. Ellis made the tackle on Rhodes again. You know, this offense is, you know, it's got a centered around their running game. It always has been here for RC in this Texas A&M offense. You know, one thing that we talked about earlier in the show is Tiki Hardeman being out, and, you know, their, their fullback has to step up and play, and that's going to be Toombs. You know, he played well. He blocked well. He caught a pass out of the backfield. You know, he's not in the ball game now. And, you know, but he played well when he was in there and did a nice job, and I think that uh, RC and his offensive staff are going to be real pleased with what they see on the field. Third and 11, and McCowan tosses to Rhodes on the screen. Got a couple. It'll be fourth and still long, though, with the clock winding down, and that ought to be it. So Texas a and I'd like to thank Alan Cannon, Sports Information Director here, the coaches at A&M, as well as North Texas, and all the folks for helping us with this telecast. Stick around. We'll be back to wrap it up. Aggies with a 28-9 victory over North Texas tonight. And AM goes to 3-1. and one. Mean Green falls to 0-4. But gave a valiant effort tonight against the 17th-ranked Aggies. And Daryl Dickey, one-time assistant here. And congratulates R.C. Slocum, who gets victory number 86. And this is 10th season as head coach at Texas A&M. We'll be back to talk about it in a moment. Kansas.